How is everybody doing this week? Good? I want you to give me a thumbs up, a thumb sideways, maybe a thumbs down. Okay. Well, I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. Happy Sunday. Today is going to be an incredible Sunday because we have been learning about putting others first. You're like, oh, putting others first. Pastor Michelle, I don't know. That can be kind of hard to do sometimes. Well, let's get into this message today, and I promise you, after this message, you're going to feel better equipped and ready to put others first. Let's go. Come on, guys, we gotta eat all this celery. Why exactly? What? I can't understand you. Because it cleanses the palate. What does that mean? It means it resets your taste buds. And you're gonna wanna prepare. This is tasting day, the most specialist day of the year, next to Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter and National Bird Hugging Day. No tasting day is tastier than this celery. It is. Whatever Chef Elaine is preparing, you're gonna wanna experience every sweet, spicy, salty, savory, even bitter bit. Whoa, don't hug all the celery, Mike. Uh, it's okay, he can have mine. Uh, we are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Mike, and this is the time we stopped being selfish. Ew, Mike, don't floss in here. What? I've got celery stuck in my teeth. Are you excited for tasting day? Oh, I decided not to participate this year. I wanted someone else to have my spot. How selfless of you. I am beyond excited. I couldn't sleep, and it's Edison's first time. I wish I could relive my first tasting day. <laughs> so how does this work again? Okay, so Chef Elaine creates three new dishes that aren't on the menu, and then the lucky tasters get to vote on their favorite, but only the winning dish gets to appear on next year's menu. The others disappear forever. Well, I can't wait. I'm glad you turned in my invitation, Mike. Me too. <laughs> I do what now? I said I'm glad you turned in my invitation for tasting day so I can try the new foods. Uh, was I supposed to do that? <laughs> Not ready yet. Um, quick question, Elaine. That's Chef Elaine. Yes, Chef Elaine. We were wondering how many seats are at the tasting day table this year? Only two people replied yes to my invitation, Harper and Mike. Mike! Oh, Mike. I, I thought you said when you were responding yes, you would RSVP for me too. I am not gonna lie. I did not know what RSVP meant. What did you think it stood for? Uh, roller skating very playfully. I thought you were inviting me to go roller skating. Guys, Will you please let me finish putting this food? Oh, Chef <laughs> Elaine, I was wondering, could you set, uh, I don't know, an extra seat at the table for a very special guest? Well, we made samples for two people, so only two people can participate. Oh, bummer. Sorry, Edison. What? Oh, it looks like you're going to have to wait till next year. Are you serious? Yeah. You're taking a spot. Yeah. That is so selfish. How? What? Technically, I turned in my invitation. I'm just following the rules. Poor guy. <laughs> he thinks I'm being selfish. Will you help me carry his plates to the lounge? Absolutely, because would a selfish person do that? No, the answer is no. We just got this postcard from our friend Chloe in Appleton, Wisconsin. She writes, Help Connect HQ, my cousin is coming to visit me for the summer and my mom says I have to share my room with her. I don't want to share my space. What should I do? Oh man, growing up with a twin sister, I know all about having to share space when you don't feel like it. You know, my friend Hannah comes over for sleepovers a lot and every time she comes over, she asks for my favorite pillow. It drives me crazy. 
But it also helps me remember, stop being selfish. Start putting others first. Harper, I like that. I think we found our point link. Stop being selfish, start putting others first. Point link acquired. Oh, would you mind helping me find the rest of the links? I would love to, but it's tasting day. Oh, that's right. Don't worry about it. I'll find the links that you enjoy tasting day and tell me all about it. That's so selfless of you, Captain. So selfish, so selfish. Edison, it's almost time for tasting day. Wanna join me? I'm not doing tasting day. Why not? I, I'm not here to blame anyone, but I, I trusted somebody with my invite. Then that somebody never replied for me. And now that selfish somebody is um enjoying tasting day instead of me. Well, I'm sure it was an accident. I'm sure Mike, I mean somebody, didn't do it on purpose. He's done tasting day before. Why couldn't he give me his spot? Well, that would be a good way for him to stop being selfish, start putting others first. Exactly. Well, you know how much somebody loves food. You can have my spot, Edison. <laughs> That's nice, but really, it's okay. Welcome to tasting day. It's time to begin. <laughs> what are we tasting? Tell me. First, we have a lovely grass-fed Kansas City strip steak with kimchi, baked in a light crust. Mike, we need to talk about I this. don't know what half of those words were, but I liked one of them, which was steak. <laughs> Fish sticks! No. This is maize crusted Chilean tilapia, drizzled with a pomegranate reduction. Fish sticks! I love fish sticks! Mike, can we talk? Mm. <laughs> and last but not least. Donuts! Well, it's a deconstructed take on the American classic. This deep fried dough ring is infused with cinnamon, cardamom, and clove. The glaze is caramelized with ginger and orange zest sugar. Donuts! Mike! What? We should be sharing this with Edison. It's selfish to keep this to ourselves. But, but, but tasting day. What's wrong? I don't know. Well, it's tasting day. Taste it. I am trying. Mike, I think you know what we need to do. I do. I really appreciate you helping me find the links for Chloe's problem with her cousin. No problem. Was that your stomach? I'm pretty hungry. I didn't eat breakfast because, well, you know. I was expecting to be tasting stuff right now. Well, I think I found the Bible link, and we'll see if it fits Chloe's problem, and then we'll work on getting you a snack. <laughs> Sounds good. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. Way back in the Bible, not that far back, not that far back, not that far back, right after Jesus died for us and came back to life. Yeah, right after that, Jesus' followers had grown from just a few to thousands. They even moved from city to city. One of their leaders was one of Jesus' original 12 disciples. You may have heard of him. His name was Peter. He traveled around preaching and teaching the people how to live and love just like Jesus. In the city of Joppa lived a believer named Tabitha. She was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. She showed others God's love by making clothes for people who needed them. But she got sick and died. Her friends prepared her body to be buried and laid her in an upstairs room until her funeral. But then they heard Peter was nearby. They begged Peter to come as fast as he could. 
As soon as Peter arrived in Joppa, he came to the upstairs room. The room was filled with women who were crying and showing Peter the coats and other clothes Tabitha had made for them. They told Peter how her kindness had blessed all of them so much. Peter asked everyone to leave the room. He got on his knees and prayed. Then he said, Get up, Tabitha. And she opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. Peter gave Tabitha his hand and helped her up. Then he called in the widows and all the believers, and he showed her to them, alive. The news spread through the whole town. Many people believed in Jesus because of the miracle of Tabitha's coming back to life. But many had already come to know Jesus because of the way she lived, loved, and served others. We can follow Tabitha's example by living and loving like she did. Tabitha showed that she wasn't selfish by doing kind things for people in need. People saw love in Tabitha, not selfishness. Oh, maybe this can help remind Chloe to serve her cousin and to help make her comfortable while she shares her room. That's great. Uh, Edison, I need help. What's up? I can't taste anything and it's tasting day. So you couldn't eat it? I couldn't eat it! I think I feel bad because you're not there to enjoy tasting day. I don't know what to do. I think I'm being... selfish. Hey, Captain Ray and I found a verse with Chloe. Maybe it'll help you too. It's from the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Say it with me like this. Philippians 2, 3. Philippians 2, 3. Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. Be humble. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. If you don't want to be selfish, you have to think about other people when you make decisions. Other people's thoughts, needs, and feelings matter as much as yours do. Yeah, when it comes to tasting day, I was only thinking about myself. I'm sorry, Edison. Thanks, Mike, but I shouldn't have dumped my responsibility on you. I should have turned in my own invitation. And besides, you love tasting day. I couldn't eat anything. I tried. I really did. But I think God was showing me that my selfishness was hurting others, even if I was too selfish to notice. I want you to experience tasting day, Edison. How selfless of you, Mike. Now, come on, we better get going before the food gets cold. So, what was your favorite dish this year? I actually gave my seat to Edison, but I think the donut hole won. Oh, that was very nice of you to give him your spot. I know that this was a big day for you. Yeah, but it felt better to be selfless than selfish, and now I can actually enjoy my food. Hmm, that's a weird one. What exactly is on that sandwich? Donut holes and fish sticks. It, it grows on you, slowly. Hey Chloe, my name is Mike and I'm a part of Connect HQ. And we found this answer for you. The Bible tells us this in the book of Philippians. Say it with me like this. Philippians 2, 3. Don't be selfish. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. You can't only think about what you want all the time. Remember, people have thoughts, feelings, and needs, and they matter too. In the Bible, Tabitha wasn't selfish with the good things God had given her. She gave out of love for others, and God had one more huge gift for her. When Peter prayed for her, God raised her from the dead. If you're only thinking about what you want, that's selfish. Take time to think of others and what they need. Share with them, whether it's time, friendship, material things, space, prayer, or encouragement. Learning to share with your friends might be difficult, and having your cousin in your space might be a little hard clothes, but we can learn from Jesus' example. That way we can stop being selfish, start putting others first, 
And if it's difficult, rely on God to help you because he always will. Thanks for the question. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Oh man, Tasting Day was the best. Can't believe I have to wait a whole nother year for the next one. I wonder if I can reserve my spot now. You know, it's easy for us to think and act selfishly, but Jesus was never selfish. He's a great role model for how we should treat each other. Now we can serve and love the same way because we have Jesus. If you've never made the choice to follow Jesus with your life, all you have to remember are the A, B, C's. A, admit. It meant that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. P, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. If you want to make that choice today, be sure to talk about it with your Connect Small Group leader before you leave. Welcome back, iKids. How about that message? My prayer is that you guys now feel better equipped to put others first. As we are in this month of April, God has been the ultimate example to us as putting others first because he put you, he put me first when he died on the cross for us. This was the ultimate love example. And so as you guys go about your week, as you go to school or you're at the store or wherever you are, make sure that you're remembering the sacrifice that Jesus made for you and for me. He loves us so much. Well, iKids, I want you to reach out to us. I want you to make sure that you are staying connected. We are so glad that you join us each and every week, and we are here for you. So God, I thank you for my incredible iKids. I thank you for their week, and I just pray that you would continue to help them, to love others, to put others first, and remind them of your great, great love for them. We love you, iKids. We'll see you again next week. Bye.